if I have that on my meditation cushion, this insight, or in satsang, and then I go out and I blame the world, so to speak, for my misery, then it's like an antidote to the landing, to the embodiment of this understanding that I am free. Unfortunately, this ignorance, this confusion is so convincing, so hardwired into our body and into our mind. That even with great insight, with great understanding, maybe with some great awakening experiences that we had, this ignorance to some degree often persists. Meaning, I know now I am consciousness or I am at least not only this body-mind. But as I am also an object and there are other objects, I can be happy being consciousness but I can be still unhappy by being confronted by life circumstances and things meaning I'm still giving possibly away my freedom, my happiness to the illusion. I am free, but this and that situation, person, has still the power to apparently make me unhappy or happy. like in the relationship, the promise that my partner will make me happy. As a person, as something separate from me, if it gives, she or he gives me what I want, then I'm happy. But unfortunately, that is not always possible. So with this remaining ignorance, confusion, unhappiness or misery or suffering is the natural consequence. If there are things there that can make me happy, then there will be things that still can make me unhappy. So, lasting happiness, peace, freedom,
that we have to very, very clearly understand over and over again because it sneaks in usually over and over again. This hardwired ignorance over and over. We have to remind ourselves that what we understood or experienced or intuitively know in our hearts that our happiness, our peace, our freedom does not lie, does not live, so to speak, in objective experience, in other people, in circumstances, in positive thoughts and feelings, in pleasant sensations, in the body. That our freedom, our happiness is not in the name and the form, in the nama rupa, but in the consciousness. In the essence of our humanness and in the essence of the world, in the reality of our humanness and our world. It's a very, usually a very huge leap, like a, like a leap in this commitment to truth, this mumuksha, this burning desire for freedom, as it's described, to give up any possibility, and even if it's just first through thought, to when I can really see and I have really understood deeply in my heart that there is no happiness in objective experience and possibly not even objects, we might look into that. Not even separate things there. If it dawns us that this could be true or we know that this is true, we have to stop excusing ourselves. In other words, at some point we have to take full responsibility as consciousness from our freedom to take full responsibility and say, there is no such thing that could bring misery to me, consciousness. There is no person, no feeling, no thought that has power over me, consciousness. No matter what I do and I make out of the gold, whatever form comes out of it, it's still pure gold. If it's not mixed with ignorance, like with nickel or something. And the analogy breaks because consciousness can never be mixed. It's always pure. It's always free. 
There is no mixing in consciousness. The mixing is in ignorance, in confusion. That's the game. So we can lament and cry about this human predicament, this people game. Or we take a stand. Is that what we are? And yes, accept certain limitations in the human form. And yes, do the best. We are the guardians of our bodies and our minds. We do the very best to nurture them well, to feed them with good food and good people and good thoughts. And... Yes, yes, yes. But we don't confuse the states of the body, the mind, and the world. The names and forms, we don't confuse them with what we essentially are. We walk this direct path, this pathless path back to us over and over again. Just we go straight home. And no. There is nothing to improve here. Nothing to change. I am impeccable as I am. And if I find myself suffering and I need the humility and honesty with myself, if I do, despite of the non-dual understanding that I am pure consciousness, bliss, happiness, peace, If I find myself suffering, not if I find myself in pain or with negative emotions or negative thoughts or negative, so-called negative circumstances in my life, but if I find myself in resistance to those phenomena, in me, in my life. In other words, when I'm suffering again. I need to be very clear in my understanding that this suffering to my reality, to consciousness, but it belongs to the avatar. I have re-identified myself with this body-mind complex, with this object in consciousness, in me. And only this identification as me, as something separate,
has the power to make me suffer. And earlier or later, no matter how enlightened we are, no matter how many beautiful experiences we had, no matter how deep our understanding is, all excuses, all apparent outside factors, being responsible for my suffering need to be dissolved in understanding. In understanding that this is still traces of ignorance, of confusion, of misunderstanding. Why is that so important? Besides of that, we don't want to suffer, of course. Every time I give my power, my freedom away to an object, to a person, to the illusion of separate things, I give power to the belief and the feeling that I am a separate thing, that I'm a separate person. I dismantle in satsang and in spiritual practice maybe, and I have great insights. And But I have to lift the understanding every day. If I have that on my meditation cushion, this insight, or in satsang, and then I go out and I blame the world, so to speak, for my misery, then it's like an antidote to the landing, to the embodiment of this understanding that I am free. I feed the illusory separate entity. Every time I give the, away the responsibility for my freedom to be lying in someone else or something else. So, in a way, embodying non-dual understanding, living up to non-dual understanding is a continuous feeding of myself with truth, applying the understanding as a remedy to the ignorance that still pops up in my mind, in my body, as a separate feeling, as a separate thought, as a separate perception.
this is not so easy to swallow sometimes because there is just no room for a but in this understanding. It's either I'm free and happy always or I'm not. There is no in between. I might experience pain i might experience even feelings from the past where i didn't have this understanding and i have maybe even trauma in my body in my feelings i i i have maybe packages of separation carrying still with me that i couldn't deal with better in the past it's kind of not my fault of course but now, which is the only reality that is, when I'm dealing with those coming back for its inherent freedom, I, in a way, have to stop excusing myself even with the past. What happened to me, how I was treated unfairly, maybe. To some degree, we all were, some more, some less. But wherever, whenever this separate thing, that separate feeling, that separate thought, that annoying circumstance, that vicious person comes into my life, And I fall for the old story that I am kind of a victim, possibly, of that circumstance, of that past, of that feeling, of that disease. I give away my freedom that is here now. <laughs> 